Blizzard has made some of the most famous and popular video games of all time, but even a team as seasoned as theirs is not without mistakes. My name is Brayden, and welcome to Blizzard Guides. Blizzard has made cultural phenomena time and time again with all of their projects, including World of Warcraft, Diablo, and even the fairly recent release of Overwatch, which has taken the FPS genre and esports communities by storm. But even they aren't immune from the occasional blunder. We've decided to take a blast from the past and review the 10 worst decisions ever made by Blizzard. Hearthstone Player Base Splits Hearthstone was launched as a unique card game for both casual and hardcore gamers alike. It was meant to bridge the gap between many different types of gamers and get them to enjoy the game together. But as time has gone on with more and more expansions to the game, many with paywalls, it's cut off a lot of the casual player base, not to mention the matchmaking system unfairly matching lower ranked players with few cards to higher ranked players with meta game decks. These two issues have resulted in a fairly split player base, which is no fun for anyone. World of Warcraft Price Hikes Regardless of whether this topic only affects a minority of players, it still needs to be mentioned. With the release of Warlords of Draenor, Blizzard decided that they were going to raise the pound sterling price of World of Warcraft subscription from $8.99 to $9.99 per month, citing local and regional market conditions as the reasons for the change. Current players were afforded the opportunity to pay the previous price, but it was necessary to pay for two years up front in order to do so. While Blizzard's actions are understandable, as they are a business and business must sometimes adjust their way of making revenue to continue to thrive, the cost increase came at no warning to the community and gave players a little time to adjust, which may have affected World of Warcraft subscription count in the long run. Diablo 3 The Darkening of Tristram When Blizzard announced this event at BlizzCon 2016 for the 20th anniversary of Diablo, it was met with many fans being extremely excited about it. Diablo 1 remade in Diablo 3? That sounds incredible! With the system's graphics mechanics of Diablo 3? Absolutely. But Blizzard was quick to disappoint fans, however, by announcing that the event would only be playable during the anniversary and not year-round. They had a lot of potential to do something really special for their hardcore fans. Whilst the gesture was nice, we would have liked to have seen more. Perhaps we'll get a full remaster and retail release of Diablo 1 someday, or at the very least, a new expansion for Diablo 3. No more player counts. At the end of 2015, Blizzard released subscription numbers for World of War Warcraft, which sat at 5.5 million subscribers. That would also be the last time that Blizzard would release subscription numbers for the game, claiming that there are other metrics that are better indicators of overall Blizzard business performance. The 5.5 million subscriber count represented the drop in over 100,000 subscribers since September of that year, reaching an all-time low. Of course, that was before the Legion expansion launch, so the numbers may have grown or fallen since then, we won't know. Other than through Blizzard's other engagement methods, to me, this this seems a tad disheartening. As an MMO player, wouldn't you want to see how well or how thriving your community is? I think it might be in part to how unpopular recent expansions have been with the majority of the community, with the exception of Legion, which saw the return of many old World of Warcraft players. World of Warcraft Content Droughts For such an expansive and massive game as World of Warcraft, sometimes content just does not get out consistently enough for players to be completely engaged and interested. The biggest example of this was during the end of the mists of Pandemic. Area. There was a gap of over a year, 14 months to be exact, between the Siege 5.4 patch and the launch of Warlords of Draenor. The same gap also occurred between Hellfire Citadel patch 6.2 and the launch of Legion. 14 months is absolutely insane to not add anything whatsoever to the game. It left a lot of people doing the same quests and raids over and over, causing many of them to unsubscribe until the next patch or expansion, or just flat out quit entirely. Blizzard claims they will rectify this in Legion, and so far they have held true to their word. We've seen a steady amount of content come in in the past few months, and more is supposedly planned, including the raid on the Tomb of Saragos and the journey to the home world of Argus. World of Warcraft Simplifying Social Interaction Blizzard games have been known to create thriving communities within their ecosystems, and this is especially true with games such as StarCraft and Overwatch and esports, but most importantly World of Warcraft, being the long-standing king of MMORPGs. Because of their shift to many forms of narrative story and single-player focus, Blizzard has sort of lost sight of what makes an MMO an MMO and not just an RPG. In an interview with Engadget at the launch of Warlords of Draenor, the 
creative director of World of Warcraft admitted to losing sight of the social aspect of their game. He said, quote, I feel like we've potentially lost sight of the social world aspect of an MMO because we've made great strides in giving you more personal, meaningful stories to your character, but whenever you do something like that, you risk removing the player from the social world. This sort of thing needs to be reviewed and looked at. Even with the launch of Legion, it got no better as every single player received an ancient artifact weapon, which in lore, there are only one apiece. So it looks and feels sort of odd when thousands of players are running around with an Ashbringer when there's really supposed to be one Ashbringer. Guilds and social grouping is what makes MMOs like World of Warcraft so special, so hopefully Blizzard will do something to remedy this in the future. Overwatch, competitive ranking system. The competitive ranking system in Overwatch has had sort of an identity crisis in the past. The ranking system has gone through three iterations in its adolescence and appears to finally be settling into its final form. In the beginning, however, Jeff Kaplan and his team team just couldn't nail down a strong ranking system that worked as intended, as Season 2 ranking was bugged and Season 1 ranking didn't seem too popular within the community. However, I guess we can cut them some slack here since they were plagued by the necessary hero balancing and bug patching that comes with any new game's release. Overwatch, Sombra's ARG. As fun as it might have been for the first month, the teasing of the Overwatch hero Sombra went on far too long and delivered a hero not worthy of the hype she got. Sombra was first mentioned or rumored even before Anna, the game's first additional non-launch hero, was released. After Anna's initial reveal and the revealing fact that she was indeed not Sombra, the rumors began flying around about who Sombra actually was, what she looked like, what ability kit she would have, etc. Blizzard thought it would be a good idea to start teasing her every few weeks by releasing something to quench the thirst of conspiracy theorists and players alike. Whether it be a string of code in the HTML section of a specific URL, Morse code delivered via calling a fictional number on a phone, or simple screen glitches when you went to certain web pages. While all of this was fun and interesting to piece together, it took over five months of teasing before we got an actual trailer showcasing the new hero, and as I stated, the hero we got didn't deliver on the hype. Although her recent patches have improved her effectiveness, she initially was underpowered in all aspects and was very specific to certain situations. Her personality and look are fine and definitely fit the roster of the heroes we already have, but hopefully Blizzard does not attempt to repeat this sort of thing again with future heroes. Catering to filthy casuals. As the gaming industry as a whole has shifted into new demographics and more financial opportunities, so have many developers and publishers in their classic games. Blizzard is no exception to this, and time and time again we see them easing up on or adding methods to help what many would call casual gamers. We're talking level boosts, loot boxes, mounts, transfers, name changes, not to mention the number crunching, removal of traditional talent trees and spells, and the addition of LFG and LFR into World of Warcraft. Now we should mention that it's completely fine if you like the sort of thing Blizzard has done to make games more accessible. Many people don't have time to dedicate hours and hours of playtime to achieve goals in games, whether it's in World of Warcraft, Overwatch, or other Blizzard games. And in this case, maybe it's a good thing that Blizzard has done this sort of thing. It opens up their gates for many different types of players in an effort to get them to enjoy content together, and that's definitely not a bad thing. What makes this a problem or a mistake is when you annihilate your old player base that has been dedicated to you for years and ignore their careful concerns about changes that you've been making. It caused many players to leave or quit entirely, and that's not good for the ecosystem of the game, present or future. World of Warcraft? Warlords of Draenor. Yes. All of it. All right, I think many World of Warcraft fans can agree to this. What the heck happened with Warlords of Draenor? The concept of the expansion was great, going back to re-experience Draenor before it became Outland, back when orcs ruled and the Legion had not yet invaded. Getting to meet old characters from the original Warcraft RTS? Sounds epic, right? Well, Blizzard somehow screwed it up. The leveling and story was okay, the zones were bearable, but one of the main problems was the main feature of the expansions, garrisons. Garrisons sounded neat in concept, but they quickly became an in-game version of the generic Facebook games like Farmville. Half of the expansion was spent sending your followers to do epic quests and missions instead of doing them yourself. Not to mention the fact that garrisons made it far too easy to grind gathering professions like mining and herbalism, which royally screw up the economy of many servers. 
and this expansion had a lower amount of dungeons and raids than ever before, leaving many PvE players stripped of good content. And let's not even get started on Ashran and the complete ignorance of the entire PvP player base. The entire expansion was a hot mess, and perhaps in the future we will delve into the nitty gritty details of what caused this expansion to crumble as much as it did. We hope you enjoyed our picks for the top 10 worst decisions made by Blizzard. We didn't want to spend too much time talking about tons of smaller things Blizzard has done specifically in World of Warcraft and Diablo, but instead wanted to focus on some larger topics of debate in the communities. If you like this video, give it a like, hit that subscribe button, and be sure to turn on notifications so that you can keep up to date with our latest content. Thank you guys so much for staying until the end of the video. My name is Brayden, and I will see you next time.